Yo, penonton sekalian, I'm a charm. Anyway, today we are going to talk about something that I wish would just go away. It's not going away, it's staying. This thing is called COVID-19. And um, let's just say this, lah. it's been around for so long now. Um, and uh, it's not just about the sickness anymore. It's not about getting sick and feeling bad. This COVID-19 infection can mess up your daily life and can mess up the lives of your loved ones. So because it's not going away, like that one friend who refused to chow, even though everyone has left already, we have to talk about it. I've gathered two experts. I've got Dr. Sanjay and Dr. Tan. Thank you for uh, coming and sharing your knowledge with us. So, ladies lah, we know COVID-19 pretty much quite a lot about it. The problem is the information can trust or cannot trust because some information yeah, quite useful some information just downright creative I don't know who invented this thing how do I tell which is legit? Douglas excellent question mm -hmm. I face this all the time I think universally all of us information overload correct if the first thing you ask is where is your source of inf information coming from? is that source credible? that's critical because if you go to a source that's trusted, you're going to get accurate information, you're going to get up-to-date information. So what are examples of, of these sources? Really things like uh, going to websites such as uh, Center for Disease Control in the US, the WHO, even our own Ministry of Health websites give you excellent information. And you find that even difficult, speak to your local doctor, your local healthcare professional. They can help you. So because COVID is not going away, and so we have to still you know, be vigilant I've got a personal story. So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a comedian, so I do gigs. Uh, and it was a good weekend. I had uh, three gigs lined up, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. One of it was for a birthday of a 70-year-old man. His son uh, knew his father was a fan, so he thought it'd be nice I go there and tell some jokes, celebrate his father's birthday. On Tuesday, I started. Lah. <coughs> Bit of a headache. So I thought, oh, no, please, no. I tested, double line. So, this is what I did. I told my management, call them, we have to cancel. And why? In my head, it was like, this is a 70-year-old man. I didn't want to go there and, you know, possibly might give him COVID on his birthday. So, we, we cancelled all the gigs now. So, I guess I, I was still being vigilant, but it cost me 17,000 ringgit. My question is, did I do the right thing, uh, doctor? Well, your pocket's lighter, but I think you made the right decision. <laughs> If you're, you're young and you're healthy, right, and Isha. you've been vaccinated, mm -hmm. right, to you, COVID may be like a, like a cold, like a viral cold. But the issue about COVID is that, and, and this is, you know, we deal with um, people who are sick, people who have other uh, diseases, which we call COVID, right? So I deal with kidney disease people. So they have a poorer immune system. So what happens is that if, if, we, are, if we are sick and we, and we pass this flu to them, right, inadvertently, you know, they may not uh, be able to withstand it as well as we do. So it's all about protecting others. It's all about protecting um, the, the people who are older, the people who have uh, poor medical health. And so I think you absolutely did the right thing. So I guess you, we, we can say that when you try your best to not be so selfish, yeah. even though you think it's not a big deal, yeah. help out. Nah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you want to protect, I mean, we live in a society. Uh, so, so it's not just about us, it's about, it's about everyone else that lives in that society as well. So while, while we may be healthy and we may be able to withstand the, the, the challenges of this kind of virus, we want to make sure that we don't pass it along to someone else who might not be able to withstand it. Dr. Tan, thank you for what you said just now. Uh, because COVID-19 symptoms are very similar to a, to a flu, right? Okay, and so for some of us, we can, we can handle it, just take some coconut water, you know, you know, take a nap or whatever. But because it's not, it's actually a, you know, a, a serious uh, disease. Dr. Sanjay, when or how can we, when we feel a bit uneasy, go, ah, ah, let's not be so relaxed about this and actually go and check with our medical professional? Another good question. Thank you, Douglas. Really. I think if you are unwell with high fever, get tested early, especially if you have a comorbid. Now, really is this. I, I, every day, I see children coming with fevers. Ah. And it's of course impossible for parents to know whether this is a COVID-19 infection or not because COVID-19, as you quite rightly said, is identical to any other virus, including influenza. The red flags to look out for when you must come to see a doctor when your child does have a fever is this. Okay, red flags, huh? Red flags. Red flags, red flags. The important yeah. one is number one. 
if your child does not respond to fever medication, within three to four hours, they're still lethargic or tired, come in. If the fever goes on for more than two or three days, come in. If your child is coughing with breathlessness, has chest pain perhaps, lethargy, not feeding well, or even a lot of sleep disturbance. We know that there are treatments available now, like a far cry from what we had back then, right? For adults, how, Dr. Tan? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that we've also made a lot of progress yeah. in that part. Well, you know, I think uh, these COVID treatments, right, they are, they are generally safe. But I think the key is that uh, if you do get detected as COVID-19, uh, if you do self-check and you do find out about it, the key is to go get seen by a doctor a bit more well, quick, mm. right? Because ah. you want to you get it seen fast so that he can decide whether you would qualify for some of these you know, treatments that are available out there. Okay, so it looks like we talked quite a lot about something we don't want to talk about. <laughs> I hope that has cleared up some of our nagging uh, doubts about COVID-19. A big thank you to Dr. Sanjay and Dr. Tan for sharing uh, with us your insights. I think the bottom line is this, okay? Everybody, we still need to keep our guard up, can't afford to relax, stay safe out there and look out for one another. Semua jaga semua. It's a fact of life. Okay, next topic. Triple vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. <laughs> you must be blessed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs>